Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the CWL Dallas Open. The next matchup on the main stage, Splice versus Era, joined, of course, now by Momo. And I want to immediately get your thoughts. This Splice team, how yep. impressed are you after they made that team change? Uh, I, I honestly thought, and going before this event, I thought, you know, the, the loss of Josh and the introduction of uh, Treo Zero, I didn't think it would change that much. I thought, yes, you, you've got two very different players, but I didn't think it would get you know, progressively better or worse. I thought it would be, you know, the similar kind of splice that we've seen. But Fair from enough. what we've seen already on the Friday, of course, coming into today, I think he's the big game and the big day for them, is it has improved. And Zero started off slow. He came into his own. His search and destroy has been on fire. We saw him drop 15 kills yesterday. Yes, sir. And I actually spoke to him as he was watching uh, Epsilon alongside myself. And Trey was saying, you know, I feel really comfortable in this squad. I feel like I've got the confidence. I've got the three players around me, which, you know, it suits my play style. And he can basically just free roam, do what he likes, and it's working for them so far. So Splice, they've impressed me so far, and I think they should go on and take this one. Fair enough. Well, I'm excited to get game number two on day two underway. We can send it down to our wonderful casters for the series, Jack and Mr. X. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Yes, excited for another pool play matchup now. We're starting to see how these open bracket teams are developing. Some major upsets in the open bracket itself. We've seen some yeah. frustration from some veteran players who haven't made it on in or are fighting for their lives in the tournament. Yes, I'm joined here by Mr. X. Matt, so far, notes from day two you're looking at. Uh, look, I thought uh, TK in their first match against EU United, uh, no, in their first map against EU United, they yep. lose to Cloud9 3-0, but they 100-point club EU United, that first hard point. It's pretty crazy. I would never have expected that to yeah. happen. I don't know what to believe anymore with some of the things we're it, seeing so far this week. And then, uh, what, Allegiance is out? Yep. Right? So there's a team that was like on the bubble, like they lose in the loser bracket, I believe, to Rogue in the final minutes of that game. So a tough loss for Allegiance. Well, we're waiting to get into our next series here on the main stage. For now, though, let's take a look at the PlayStation 4 top five plays from day number one. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Puckett and Maven bringing you the top five plays from the CWL Dallas day one presented by PlayStation 4. And play number five is going to be formal. He has been a beast, and it's a three-piece coming in for him versus Red Reserve. And Optic Gaming just storms right back. Coming in at number four, though, we got to take it to Europe, showcasing one of the finest players of all time. It's Moose with the ace against United on Crusher. The magnificent Moose continues to be dominant. His reign of destruction has gone on through all of Infinite Warfare, and you continue to see him heat things up. Coming in now at number three, we're looking at Gunless, the MVP from Atlanta. Get it done here against Cloud9 in a game four hard point. He runs through Cloud9. Absolutely, Gunless with the SMG in hand was simply melting Cloud9. Didn't matter who challenged, it was Gunless always coming out on top. And this is, this is easy pickets for United. We got to take it to formal once again. It's Optic Gaming in the game of the day. Optic versus Envy. It was Scump and Formal setting the tone early in hardpoint. As good as Formal was, Scump was a wizard here. 35 and 17, you see him out now. He could do no wrong. The king is back, baby. Bash Brothers representing the green wall sent Envy home with a hot 3 up. Scump letting them know. We are down to the best play of the day. This one, it's Clayster with a sniping surprise. I said, oh man, he's screwed. You can't pick up sniper kills at short range. Clayster proving everybody wrong with that snapshot. The snap, the flick, he hits the shot, and that is him at his best. Being a difference maker with the sniper, it's disgusting stuff here from Clayster. That's going to do it for your top five from day one of the CWL Dallas Open. Join us for day two as the action continues to heat up here in Texas. Again, that was the top five plays from day one of the CWL Dallas Open presented by the PS4. Already so many memorable moments, some great series, and we have another one ahead. This will be a Pool D matchup between Era Eternity up against Splice. Matt, 
It's no secret. We know a lot about Splice. The other side of things, we don't know much about no, ERA. Do not know much about this ERA team coming in. I just saw they lost to Panda in a game five. Yep. I believe the final score in that SD was six to two. They win both hard points during that series, though. So they look like a very strong hard point team coming into this match against Splice. But we do know the firepower that Splice has in their squad, Jeff. Oh, they definitely do. And they are confident heading into this matchup. They were electric on day one. Looking to keep that momentum now into day two. Here's your maps. Anything that really stands out, or are you just favoring Splice in general? Look, they, 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 this could have been any combination of maps. I would have favored Splice. And uh, to see actually a breakout hardpoint not in there, you would favor them even more. I mean, that's the one map you were really worried about them yeah. on. I spoke to them a little bit earlier. They just do not play it well. A lot of teams in Europe, quite frankly, Jack, they're saying aren't even like scrimming it really. Like that's how much they just don't really enjoy that map. So okay. uh, quite <laughs> odd, not scrimming map in the map pool going into an event. I don't know, you know how that's gonna work hey, out you know, for you, uh, but that's a good strategy. Just don't play a map and just lose it for free. And now you're yeah. down 0-1. Like maybe if we ignore it, they'll just never put it in. <laughs> like, nah, it's definitely not gonna work like that. Yeah, that is not how it works at all. The Europeans, we know they've got to work on that. But for now, you heavily favor Splice going into that series. I actually caught up with, you saw Zero there for a second on your screen. I talked to him a little bit. I was picking his mind saying, what are you nervous about? What do you know about this era team? He says, Jack, to be honest, we don't really know anything but we're not going to underestimate any opponents. We're going to come into this with the same firepower as we would against any top squad. You got to show your opponents mutual respect. We heard it from Skump yesterday, now from some of the top EU players. Matt, you know some of that experience. You probably had to keep that in line for when you used to coach that old Cole EG era dominant team. You show them respect before the game, and then once you get into game, there's nothing <laughs> but disrespect. That's the way I go about it. I mean, you just want to go into these games and just crush the opponents. Yeah. I, that's the way I, I used to go about it. Like as soon as the game started, like you don't even care who's on the other side. Like, you just go as hard as you can, just try and put up an insane scoreline. But uh, it is actually funny. We've talked so much about Bants, Mad Cat, yep. and uh, Zero for the side of Splice. It's actually Jerd, who's number one on that team in Respawn KD coming in this one. Hey, and what's funny is this is another time where we see these are four very strong European players that when you have someone like Jerd, who you don't get to talk about as much, on a team, it just shows the caliber around him on this squad. He's been electric so far this weekend. I'm going to stop saying the word electric or else I'll drive myself insane. <laughs> because yeah, nah. I don't know what I'm saying. No, Mad Cat actually seems kind of happy for the first time in a very long time. Uh, <laughs> you know, it did not seem happy in uh, CWL Stage 2 last year. Obviously, he leaves Millennium, comes right back. You no, know, they end up having a good performance in Stage 2, winning that event. But you know, this is the first time I've actually seen him like really excited to play with the team. Well, I'm excited for this one as well, Matt. It is Splice versus Era. This crowd so far in Dallas has impressed me to no end. Absolutely packed to kick off Saturday. And oh boy, we're just getting started with the action. Off the break, we're watching the top European team in Splice doing what they can to hold this middle hard point. Yeah, it was four kills, four splice at the beginning of this game. They get control of the center hard point. The Eris team, they do have the spawns for this next hard point that's going to pop up, but still, Splice getting a ton of time on this center hard point. You need a break to come through for Era. Yeah, and we all know the strength of Splice in a game mode like hard point when it's not on breakout. They're basically one of the best in the world, and they're showing it right now up 22 to two. One interesting stat to bring up as the series goes on, Splice so far undefeated in uplink of all game modes, so you've got to keep that in mind if you're Era. You need to start off with a win early on, or else Splice take this hard point. s &D we know can go to really either squad, depending on who gets those timings in their favor, and that if Splice play uplink like they have, this could very well be a 3 up Yeah, speaking of Splice earlier today, the only game mode they were worried about coming into this event was Search and Destroy. And now that you've seen some good performances from them in s &D, specifically Bans, you're not really too worried about them in any of the other game modes. And Jack, I think, you know, we've obviously rated this team number one in Europe. I think we have to talk about where this team ranks worldwide in terms of worldwide competition. I mean, you look at North America, really top heavy, but then where does Splice fit in, that, in those ranks? Yeah, I think that this is a great opportunity for them to prove that they should be in the top maybe five, six in the world conversation if they, they can should do be, well this weekend. But also, with the Global Pro League, it was announced last night, they're now one of the, I believe, four teams we know of so far in that Global Pro League. The first spot secured on the European side of things. So again, congratulations to them. You've made it in. Now you need to continue to perform when on the stage with the best in APAC in North America and Europe. Yeah, and it's a roster that's been put together not to be the best in Europe. I don't think they're content with just that this year. This is a team that is built to be one of the best teams in the world, and they have shown it so far here in Dallas. It's going to be a 71 to 23 lead for Splice. They get control of this next hard point, a big two-piece from Zero as he started off pretty hot. 
He most certainly has 10 and 2 right now, a 5.0 KD. It's been all spliced so far. They have a full one minute lead. When we look at this era squad, obviously we know some of these names not as big in competitive Call of Duty, but for as long as I've been casting, I've actually seen some of these guys be subs in the, in the pro league back in Advanced Warfare. Obviously, Neglect, Reviction. We've seen Lyric play with some top squads as well, always fighting in that open bracket, trying to get into pools. Here they do exactly that, but now they've got a long road ahead. They're going to try to fight for that top two in the pool. I don't think it's gonna happen, but hey, they've made it this far. Well, look, Rise Nation hasn't won a game. So far, there you go. Uh, you know, Enigma 6 has looked very strong, so you don't know how they would have fared against them. They needed that win against Panda earlier. That would have been a big win yeah. for this era team. Potentially could have made an upset happen in this group. As we know, they lost that one in game five. Looking to turn things around here off the break of this scorch hard point. Right now, they're being outscored by just shy of 100 seconds. We're watching Mad Cat from Splice, regarded as one of the best in the history of Europe. And why? Because of the abilities he has with uh, the assault rifle weapons. You're seeing how the NV4 just plays into that pinpoint accuracy he has. Currently at 10 and 6 on a three streak, and now his teammates are flooding on through. And where some players have you know struggled to adjust from Call of Duty to Call of Duty, I feel like Mad Cat has just been good all there. across the board. He's always been strong in every Call of Duty game, whether you know it was Advanced Warfare, all the way back to Black Ops 2. Just very strong with the assault rifle, super accurate, very smart player in SND. Mad Cat, one of the best, you know, all time players in Europe. Oh, yeah. A and many people in North America highly regard him, uh, many of the pro players, sorry, highly regard him as the best that they face from Europe as well. It's not just a statistic thing. It, it is, when it comes down to it, Mad Cat knows what it takes. And right now, his team has triple the score of their opponent. Takeaways from side number one, Matt. Look at the slang in favor of Splice right now. Every time I bring it up there, you yeah. see four go down on Era. That's just something you cannot happen, especially on the rotations. I mean, look, this has been an ugly game from Era at yeah. the start. They obviously took both hard points, like I said, against Panda in their previous series. Splice a completely different animal than Panda. You can see uh, right now, they're just dominating in the kill feed. 14 and five from zero. Jerd putting up some good numbers as well. Nobody over 10 kills from Era through the first half of the game. There, you mentioned the kill difference between these teams. Last I checked, it was about a 17 kill difference, Matt. What does that change for a team when you have all the slaying potential and power in the world and you're used to out slaying versus when you're getting out slayed and fighting from the back? But what changes in your gameplay? Oh, I mean, look, if you're winning in the slaying department, obviously you're getting a good chunk of the time, but a lot of those kills probably coming on rotation as well. So that means you're getting the good spawns for those next hard points that pop up. When you're not picking up any kills, even in the middle of the map and whatnot, you're just gonna keep getting spawned further and further away from the hard points. It's gonna be so difficult to get time. Here's a perfect example of where Era can begin to come back in this game. They have the control of the turbine hard point and they have the spawns for a brief moment. Somehow, Bance has won a gunfight. He's made it up towards this outer catwalk area. And just like that, Matt, they force everyone out on Era. And those are the spawns you mentioned, if we can. Let's bring up the minimap really quickly. Look at how far away everyone on Era are. Those are those red arrows trying to move across the map. It's been, what, 15 seconds now of uncontested time for Splice. They're now up by 100. And Era actually did something really nice there, Jack. They pinched from both sides of the mini-maps. So they had players coming from the top side and the bottom side. What that does is it spawns Splice all the way out. There's no available for spawn for Splice to spawn over by that hard point. It brings them to the other side, but it was just too slow of a push. They yeah. spawned them out, didn't take advantage of that man count, and they're going to get punished for it. And not only did they not take advantage of it, Splice had the streak coming out, which was stalling them. Another thing to mention, while it's great, yes, you're doing that, you just need to win your gunfights. And Splice kills them all again. They were on a combined eight streaks for a brief moment. Again, look at the kill feed. Look at your scoreboard in the top right. Reviction, negative eight. Neglect, negative one. Godlike, negative five. Eric, negative five. Everything just going against error in this game. And I don't want to continue to harp on it, but you have to bring it up. There's a difference in caliber between Splice and error, and you're seeing it right now. I mean, look. Yeah, you can rotate early all you want. You can have the best strategies. If you can't kill people, Jack, you're yeah. just not going to win these games, especially with how you know, slay dependent a game mode like Hardpoint is. There are so many kills that happen on a map. If you're not going to win most of those engagements, you're just not going to be able to contend with the top teams in this game mode. Well, shout out to Neglect. You saw right there, does get all of his streaks, which can absolutely come into use at this new drill hard point. But as I mentioned that, Matt, you kind of shrug your shoulders. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean come are, on. are three streaks going to be enough? I, I, I don't know. I'm just bringing it up, making sure the viewer at home took note. 
Neglect does have streaks. Maybe something they can use as a catalyst to come back. I mean, the streaks would have been great if you're close, right? I mean, you're not really close. <laughs> you're right down now. by I mean, two minutes. Yeah, you're down by two I'm minutes. I'm sorry. I want to believe. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, there's one thing to believe, and then I'm more of a realist. But, <laughs> but you look at the drill hard point. It's a great one to use the streaks on, right? You can clear these players out of position. But being down so much, Jack, you have to consider maybe even saving some of these streaks. I mean, you can't burn them all here. You get drill. Fantastic. Then you go over to bridge. You don't get control of that. What do you do? Yeah. I mean, you haven't broken the bridge hard point once and we've gone over towards it. So very difficult spot for this era team to be in. Well, not only do you mention them using the streaks, they've now dropped out the bombardment. They use the Trinity Rocket. The Scarab comes in. They use the Centurion. And Lyric also pops his payload as well. So three streaks, two payloads just to get, what, 40 seconds on this hard point, and they're still down by 80 plus. Yeah, it's difficult to kind of manage all of that utility in the course of the game. I mean, yeah. right here, you burn all of that on this hard point. Great, you've got drill. But what are you going to do when you go to bridge? And yeah. this game, if Era is going to come back, it's going to extend over to tur Turbine again and inside to the warehouse. Like, what are you going to use to break those hard points? Because now Splice is going to have abilities coming off the board as well. And you mentioned, what are they going to do for this middle map area? Look at your kill feed now. No streaks. It's no problem for Splice. They flood on in. They have the Centurion drop from Mad Cat. They're putting on a show right now, a combined seven streak. They're 10 seconds away. European Call of Duty fans, Splice are the real deal. They're staying hot in Pool D, and they'll take map number one, 250 to 149. I mean, Jack, that is a tough loss there for ERA. Very dominant performance from Splice there in map number one. And that is what you wanted to see this team come out and do this morning. Get the job done against this team, advance into bracket play, looking strong like they did on day one. A very good first map win from Splice. This team is now beginning to click in some of the online 2Ks. Splice did have their fair share of struggles after the whole EU roster mania happened. It looks like they've now found their bearings. They've got the communication they need. You see Mad Cat right there talking to his teammates, making sure they're all on the same page. They will take a one to zero series lead. Remember, remember, these are best of fives now. Era yes. had to play through some best of threes. And that open bracket, Splice has played only best of fives this weekend. So Era, they still have their chances. But we did mention Splice, three and oh so far in uplink. They've yet to lose it so far this weekend. Yeah, and I mean, you look at Search and Destroy. We said that is probably Splice's weakest game mode right now, just because they don't have enough time to bring zero into the fold and kind of get on the same page strategy wise. But we can take a look at some of the clips from game number one. All splice here, Jack. All splice indeed. Now, we mentioned must win games all the time. You would think that this game too, Search and Destroy, is a must win for the side of Era. I think that's more than safe to say. But early on in that map, it was controlled by splice. Era, they do get those streaks, and we see probably their best hold was drill. But Matt, you mentioned for three streaks and two payloads, you better hold the majority of time there. Yeah, it's a lot of utility. And look, you can see it paid off on drill, right? I mean, they win that hard point 63 to 20, a lot of that time taken on the second rotation. But look at every other hill. I mean, we talked about where they got burned on bridge. Like, they weren't going to be able to break it if they didn't have any of those streaks. They got absolutely destroyed on that hard point. I, I, I don't know if I've ever seen that before on this map. 85 to 30 in time, typically. It's close, but that is completely one-sided for that middle hard point. And you got to think a lot of the times that we saw Splice fighting on bridge, they did not have the spawns for Turbine. And then oh. you see all the time they got on Turbine as well, tells me that they were able to break those hard points fast and then lock it down. When you have two top teams facing each other, it's not easy to flood right down that outer catwalk area towards Turbine and break the hard point. Well, guess what? Splice knew they have the slang advantage, and they did it every single time. Up next, you see on your screen, Search or Destroy on Crusher will be map number two. When talking about Splice and some of these European teams, how do you think they'll fare on this map going up against ERA? Well, look, I think you know a big part of this is not knowing your opponent. I mean, yep. they have not seen ERA play really much at all. Usually, a lot of these top teams, they kind of know. They have an idea of who's going to be doing what in S&D. When you play against OpTic, you know there's a chance Formal has a sniper rifle in his hands. Yeah. You know Zuma is going to be the one kind of going on flanks for FaZe. Like, when you go up against a team like ERA, like, it's kind of scary because you just don't know what to expect from these squads coming out of the open bracket. Ironically enough, Matt, you think ERA just faced Panda. Panda was that team last event that no one knew what to expect. True. They flew around with ERADs. People didn't know where they were going in search and destroy. And it was on this map on Crusher where Panda really made a name for themselves. And you do have to look at this ERA squad. They've had kind of like a wave of emotions so far today. I mean, they get a huge win to get into pool play. Yeah. Then they get in. 
you know, they have a very tough game against Panda. They lose in the final map. They probably feel pretty bad about that loss. Ushered straight up here to the main stage to get destroyed in game one by Splice. Those guys got to be going through a lot right now. It's been a long day already for ERA, and it's only 3 p.m. our time here. There was a look at your maps. Splice taking that first map by 101 seconds. Reminder for everybody at home, these are our Saturday final pool play matches for all these open bracket teams who've now made it on in. They're fighting for a chance to get into that top two to earn themselves a spot in that championship's winner's bracket. Right now, I don't know if that's gonna be something that happens for Error. But I tell you what, these pool play matches are very important, but the loser bracket matches that are gonna happen later with some of the teams on the bubble for the Global Pro League are gonna be huge. I mean, you have guys like Epsilon. Yep. I know iGame, formerly you know, Team 3G. Evil Geniuses is down there. Uh, we already talked about it, Allegiance, who was on the bubble. They're gone. So a lot of teams vying for their Pro League life here. All focus is on qualifying for the CWL Global Pro League Stage 1. By the end of this weekend, we will know our 16 teams. Splice is already one of them, and hey, you know, Era might not be in, in the closest of contentions, but it was brought up. If you win this event, the 25,000 pro points per player that you get is realistically enough to get you into the league itself. Well. Era has a lot of work to do, Jack, if they're going to get I, all those pro points. I said it in game one, I'll say it again. I'm giving him a chance. Oh, and uh, Revix actually almost lines up a snipe shot there on two players, and it's actually a team kill that comes in from Splice at the beginning of this round to make it quickly a 2v2. Reviction goes soaring forward with his EMC pistol. Don't know if I agree with that decision, Matt. You're looking at me like, did, did, did we miss something? Is man? he aware that's a pistol? <laughs> yeah, that is uh, not a gun you want to just be pushing at two players with around these crates. Uh, you see he has two players. You know, one on either side would not have been able to win both of those games. Nice shots there by Zero to close out that round. Splice start up right away, one to zero, as Era looked to battle back. Yeah, now we saw Splice play this in their first match against Rise Nation. They did a fantastic job of just all agreeing on one site and just pushing it as a four-man team. They did a fantastic job using those strats. I love that on Crusher as well. I actually completely agree with this decision. And look at already from Splice, they're changing things up time and time again. Jerk gonna come soaring around this corner, gets the beat down, and the help from Zero already a four versus three. And now Era, they have to watch their spawn that they just pushed from. They cannot um, get this bomb down at all. Jerk in a good position here with the Erad as oh. well, and he actually gets taken out by Godlike, so we'll have a 2v2. But I do like those close quarter angles. He's playing with the submachine gun. Look at the slow rotation from Mad Cat. This could work out absolutely perfectly. He at least spotted one that was the Phantom Camo player just in front of him. I do believe he's been seen now by Reviction. Don't challenge Mad Cat. What are you doing, my friend? Yeah, that's such a difficult fight to have. I mean, most likely he has a K-Bar in his hands going up against an NV4 at that range, not going to win it. You see Lyric coming in, cleaning up the kill, forcing this 1v1. It'll be Lyric going up against Zero, and Zero is off to a 6-0 start. Jack. And this is going to be an awkward timing now for Lyric, too, because there's so little time left in this round that when he goes for a plant, it's going to be a last-ditch effort. I do believe this should work out for him now. As look at the minimap. You see Zero slowly rotating on over. He's going for the 50-50 call. He's going to be incorrect. Lyric will plant this bomb with Zero as far away as possible, and that's the best-case scenario for Lyric in this one, Matt. It seems like he's going to back all the way up, Jack, which is quite odd. He's giving Zero a lot of space to get over close to the site. Don't know if I like that call, but see Zero has to be very patient. Check all his corners. A lot of different spots you can hide here around the B site. Oh, this works out perfectly for Zero. He's 7-0. Seven, oh. seven of his eight kills on his team. He'll get a camo in round two with the Trinity Rocket, the Scorchers as well, and he's one more off that bombardment. What a start from the new pickup, Zero. Oh, I mean, he dominated the game five against Rise Nation on retaliation search and destroy. So picking off where he left off yesterday, Zero crushing era here in game number two. Round number three, he's got streaks, he's got active camo. Cannot be worse for era. And this map completely changes how you have to play on that out when you have streaks because now, you can go ahead, force this play towards B. You maybe have your streak player play a little bit further back on the map. He can go ahead and drop down that Trinity rocket when his team needs it. Good job by Madcap to get out here. That's not a gunfight you're going to win. Well, it's not even using the streaks. It's just a threat of having the streaks. Yeah. It changes the way Era plays. I mean, now they have to be cautious. Can we go over to B? If we do, it has to be a fast hit right away. We can't take our time, be out in the open. Maybe on defense, we can't kind of sit all the way in that back rock area. We got to push forward. So it's going to be a little bit easier for Splice to play this now that they have these score streaks. Era are splitting the map, so they're going to see if they can wind up getting a pinch. 
in this scenario. Look at this camel already in round number two. That's gonna get the drop on one player. The assist is enough, and the help from his teammate puts it into a two versus two. Jerd and Zero against Lyric and Reviction. Time ticking down. Remember, Ira still have to defuse this bomb. Zero finally loses a gunfight. Jerd, though, there to help with the assist again. He does know where the player is. He's got to play his life. Such a smart play from Jerd, but I don't think he got away in time. The defuse will come in. Reviction catches him just at the end to get Era around on the board. I didn't think he was going to get oh, there in time. No, nah, neither did I. I actually turned and looked at our other monitor just to make sure. Oh, no, he, he, he had it. He had it. He had it. He gets it off, and Woo. I did like that play attempt by Jerd. Just doesn't make it around that corner in time. Maybe another look, look, one. Here it is again. Look at how close. If Jerd's able, he, he the thing is, he ran at a boost, yeah. so he had no more time to keep jumping around that left corner. He had to wall. If run. He would have had another little bit of boost that yep. made it to that platform. Yep. Jerd and Spice win that round. So, very clutch round there from Era. Try and fight back into this search and destroy. Keeping it close. It's what I like to see. Even with Zero getting those streaks, they pop Camel that round as well. Hey, Era still have a chance in this game. First one, though, comes in from Bance. The second kill there as well. The A site has now been claimed by the boys of Splice as everything's just closing in just like that. It's Reviction 1v4. I mean, Zero uses that camo, but if this game goes the distance, you figure he's going to get two or three, <laughs> three camos in Search and Destroy. Would be an uh, absolutely nutty game from Zero, but seeing the final kill camp will be Splice taking this round as they go up 3-1, to one, Jack. And you see these streaks not used yet by Splice, but it's just changing the way Era has to play by forcing their way into the A site. And remember, Matt, you brought this up earlier on. You said how Splice on this map do a great job of calling the site and hitting their arrows four together. What do they do right there? They send four into A, overwhelm the couple of players that kind of trickled on in from Era. And from then on out, it was easy for the boys from Europe to close this one out. And look, they're baiting perfectly for these streaks to come on in. Everyone from Era running without cover. Streaks gets called in for a second, but they're not going to use it. They're just going to ping it, and they're going to spot where they are on the minimap. Yeah, once he pings those streaks, knows exactly where the players on Era are. They have the man advantage because Bans picks up a kill with the sniper right off the rip. They're going to be able to get bombed down. This is an easy round win for Splice here, Jack. And they also save those streaks, so it's huge. You gotta love what you're seeing right now from this squad as a former coach yourself. It's smart decision making, the shot calling is there. The questions we had about Splice losing Josh on this team, will it still be the same communication level? It does appear so. Four versus three, they've gotta push through these choke points to try to challenge the boys of Splice already two dead from Era. It's neglect by himself. And yeah, he's got no shot in this round. Splice up four to one. Quite frankly, Jack, I mean, their strats look better than yeah. what they had, Josh. I mean, they just look more on the same page. Seems like a little bit more composed. I mean, we would do those listening to Josh, right? And he talks so much, so much communication. Is there too much talking? And, and even Mad Cat was saying that to me this morning. He's like, it was just too much. He's like, we were communicating through that, but like, you can't even tell. Because <laughs> you just, all you would hear is Josh during those listen-ins. And I think it's also kind of given some of these guys a little bit of freedom to play how they like to play. Because, you know, Mad Cat and Jur, they would listen to Tommy for a very long time. And then playing with Josh, it's like, those guys probably had a different mindset of how the game should be played. Now they're getting to show it. Reviction seeing if he could possibly ignite his team in this game with a sniper rifle being brought out near middle map. Not going to hit that shot, though, to kick off the round. And now these streaks again from Zero. He saved them last round. He's going to hover it and get a ton of information for his team. Unfortunately for him, everyone already inside, and it's a first blood for Era, even after that Trinity rocket. They should be able to get bombed oh, down, but no. Mad Cat gets two and gets away with his life. You cannot let that happen if you are Era. Bans comes around the outside, but quickly looked like a round that was going to go in Era's favor. Splice takes as they go up 5-1. When you get first blood and you get control of that A site, there's no excuse to lose that round. Somehow, Mad Cat got two, got away. He had the assist on the third, and there you see him clean up the final kill. That's why he's one of the best, man. That's if you're going to best. contend with these top teams, you just cannot lose a round that you have that big of an advantage in. I mean, to kill one player on the bomb site and then to get control of it, you have the man advantage. All you have to do is trade the kills out. Yeah. You can get bombed down, draw those players in. They let Mad Cat run right in, pick up two kills, get out with his life. You cannot let that happen. If there's one thing you could take away so far from these first couple games is that Era learning a lot of the holes in their setup, what they need to improve on as a team. They're trying all sorts of things, which I do like. I'll commend them on that. Here's an example of something different. They're going on the full flank, and Zero's caught with his pants down, four versus three. Yeah, he's trying to call in streaks there, does not get anything down. But the bomb does get planted at B. Let's see how Era selects to push this. And you see Mad Cat coming around the outside. He's got streaks of his own now, Jack. And with the bomb in that open area, maybe he gets kind of lost here and tries to use one. 
He knows there's someone by the site. The Centurion yeah. gave him a ping. Now the streak's going to come in. He can go ahead and just play all the time in the world here, forcing players off the site. Now it's hover this for, the, for the Trinity Rocket. This is just so perfectly done. This is why streaks are so key, folks. One versus one. Mad Cat against Godlike. There's the round and the win. Splice up two to zero. Yeah, when he calls in that second missile, he's actually able to see where Eviction is. He can just hover it up above his head, and then it just puts him in a, a pinch. I mean, he can't come out, go to the bomb to try and defuse, because he'll just get hit with it. And then even then, I mean, he just hides for a very long time. Now, not enough time on the clock to get to it, and Mad Cat knows exactly where he is. Talk about tools to use to win a round. Centurion, you had zero about the call-in streaks. Mad Cat drops down the bombardment, which gets one. The Trinity Rocket gives him all the information he could ever need. And then, if it came down to it, the Scorcher's ready to go, too. Splice looking quite good in pool D. Yeah, I mean, look, there was a lot of utility in the hands of Splice all game long. Yep. I mean, potentially, they would have got a second camo there from zero, but you saw the streaks from zero. You know, the active camo from him as well, and then the streaks from Mad Cat. You know, when you when you give the team that much, you know, utility to work with, you're just not going to be able to win these games. No. And here again, some of the highlight moments from Zero, and then Mad Cat decided, hey, it was his turn to show on up in this game. If you are the boys of Era right now, yes, this is maybe one of your first major main stage appearances. You're facing one of the best in the world in Splice. And now you've got to be worried because you're about to face Splice in a game mode they've yet to lose this weekend, which is Uplink. Let's take a look, though, at how this game all broke down. The box score is ready to go. 3.67 KD that map for Mad Cat. 11 kills and only three deaths. Yeah, I mean, this is supposed to be Splice's weakest game mode as well. Yeah, just kind of crazy to see is you know, Splice, they go on a tear. They win rounds four through seven to close it out. Uh, era though, Jack, I mean, they have a lot to work on. And I think sometimes, you know, you come out of the open bracket, right? And you get thrown into these pool play matches. You're so excited that you've made it in to pool play. Like, the next thing you know, like, you're out. Like, it just happens so fast. Like, yeah. you just go from one match to the next, and then right after this, they'll go play one more. It's like, after that, you just kind of look around the rest of your team, like, what the hell happened? <laughs> like, uh, like, we're already in loser bracket? Like, you just kind of lose, like, all concept of time and what's going on. So I do feel for these guys, very difficult position to be in. These Saturdays are about stamina, about being able to stay in the matches, keep your head into the game. There is still a long road ahead for ERA. They're by no means out of this series yet, but they have to claw back into things in our next map, which will be Uplink on Throwback. This is the CWL Dallas Open presented by the PS4. We'll be right back. This is a slaughter. Blaster on a roll. Oh, you got it's not pretty. Somebody stop this man. What's up? What's up? My God. How, howdy, y'all. I'm, I'm Jack, and I'm in Texas, and I'm joined by Mr. X. Oh, God. I, I don't know where I was going with that. I, I yeah. You know, uh, every event that I go to, I try to match the accent and the talking of the, the, the local people. I think that was worse than my British accent, which is really saying something. Yeah, your accents are just pretty... Pretty Stop awful it. across the board, but uh, we do have a Stop match it. about to go into game number three. Uh, Scorch Hardpoint went in favor of Splice. Pretty large margin. Same with the Crusher Search and Destroy. 6-1 victory for Splice. Uh, Era, you know, they're going to have to pull a crazy upset here, Jack, yep. in game number three, because as we talked about, Splice undefeated in Uplink coming into this match. I'm ready. I, I hope the boys on Era are ready. There they are on the main stage again. Congratulations to them. They've made it this far, but they know that Yes, getting to pools, it's a great achievement, going through that crazy, crazy pack open bracket, but you want to also put on a show in pools. That's how you get noticed in competitive Call of Duty. That's how you make your come up happen. You beat the best, and then they take note and remember your name for the future. Well, look, I think this is an era team where they can play against some of the best teams in pool play, and it's kind of a, a bar to see where they're at as a team. Right? I mean, they probably don't come into this expecting to beat Splice, but they want to see, you know, what game modes they need to put more emphasis on as they practice, as they go deeper into the tournament. Let's get into it. Game number three, Throwback Uplink. Going to be our map and game mode off the break. We're watching Zero again. The guys start off 7-0 in Search and Destroy. They are on Crusher. 
And in this one, his three teammates around him actually died right off the break. And I've been really impressed with the patience from this splice team that we've seen from them in Uplink. What I mean by that is when they get the drone, they're just not gonna, okay, let's all just run forward <laughs> and bring it this way. It's like, you no, know, they'll have the drone, they'll bring it on one side of the map. Look at the bottom side, you have Bance going on a little bit of a flank. They'll kind of wait till he gets in position, maybe even picks up a kill, then try and bring the drone in and really kind of collapse on the opposing team. Already a little something unorthodox here as they move the drone towards this backfield side. They bait the players from ERA out of position. Meanwhile, Jurd has already rotated towards the middle map. Unfortunately, does lose a top gunfight in Bending. But I, I like the idea. They're changing things up, keeping ERA on their toes. One minute into this one so far, though, it's a tied game. It's a lot like basketball when the other team's playing like a zone defense and you want to swing the ball from one side of the court to the other, just get defenders moving and out of position. Yeah, I know. You're looking at me like you have no idea what I, I know. I know what that means. Yeah, I played a lot of zone defense back when I played basketball. <laughs> but that's kind of what you want to do. You want to get players moving from one side to the other. It just creates holes and you try and get the ball to the middle of the map. Yep. You're able to put some points on the board. Is that the game with the hoop? Yeah, yeah, basketball is the game with the hoop. Okay, cool, cool. I think that I played that. Uh, as we see there, Zero try to go for the shot onto the hoop, aka the uplink portal here. Unfortunately, doesn't get it off in time. As Era do have the drone. Now, if you are Era, you know how Splice are. You know their slang power. What can you do in uplink to try to give yourselves a shot at a score? Is it playing more for just ones? Is it dropping the drone and trying to challenge those gunfights? Are you going for different types of routes, maybe across towards field? Yeah, I think the routes is the one way you can kind of affect okay. a, a top team in uplink. A lot of the times we see teams use some standard routes. Right here, you want to bring it towards spike path, maybe get the one point throw over the building here, straight down the gut. We don't see a lot of emphasis towards that top side of the map. Teams are just not used to fighting in that position. Yep. You end up spawning in weird positions when you bring the drone up there, put more emphasis on that side of the map. So maybe Eric can bring it over there, get some one-point plays on the board, put some pressure on Splice. And as teams fight for position here, when we, if we can, let's look at the minimap for a second. We talk about the top and bottom part of the map. It is literally the top part of that minimap and the bottom part. All teams fighting for this drone at the bottom part of that minimap is the popular lane. And some of those differences you can make on a team like Era is to move the drone towards that top side where they have teammates spawning right now. Yeah, just pay attention when you see players coming off spawn on the minimap. Instead of going over towards that top side and cutting through the middle, they always wrap back towards their base because you always have the chance of spawning your teammates on that top side in that unfavorable position yep. and letting the other team get a lot of easy scores. Well, right now they're trying to fight for any chance they have to get control of the drone. And we mentioned some different lanes. Here's a perfect example. I, I like this. Go for this outer field push. It, it worked for FaZe versus Optic back in Vegas. But when you have two players there, the other two are still in middle, and you're losing your first gunfight, you gotta ditch it. You have now nobody in middle because they started rotating late. A little bit of a sloppy decision there. I mean, realistically, what does ERA have to lose? I mean, they Try lose this game. Whatever, you move on in polls, you aren't going to end up in the loser bracket anyway. You may as well just try and figure out a way you can beat some of these top teams in this game mode. And Lyric, for ERA, getting off to a very nice start. Look at his stats, Jack. 14 and 6 right now, leading all of the lobby in kills. And that, and that 14 and 6 performance is why the slang is much, much closer compared to the first game. There's four dead again on Splike. So ERA doing a great job of continually defending their base. They haven't had control of the drone or possession of the objective for the majority of this game. But what they have done is stop Splice from scoring. They're keeping this one close. Now they just need an opportunity to go for some points themselves. Yeah, they've done a great job on the defensive end, but now when they try and go on offense, they throw the drone down, they try and pick up some kills, they get nothing. They're not able to do anything on the offensive side of things. You kind of look at this game, Jack, it's almost like a bend but don't break yeah. mentality from ERA. You're just waiting for Splice to just take advantage, blow this game open. Here's a chance for him to do just that, potentially this throw now in the hands of Jurd, but no, the beatdown comes in from Lyric as he stops that one in its tracks. Four minutes in this one, only one minute left inside. Number one, still a scoreless game. This has been so defense heavy so far. You know, this is like in basketball when you play that zone defense, it's doing good, I think. You know, a, a very good zone <laughs> defense is very difficult to get by, Jack. And actually, it's a pretty good point. When you don't move the drone from side to side against the zone, it's very easy to just kind of so I, up I made a good sports reference? So you did make, that's the first ever sports reference you've ever been successful Yes. At. It wasn't even intentional, you were just kind of accurate. But you do see the drone now in the middle of the map going over towards the top side. And look, just the movement of the drone. Now the guys on ERA have to go all the way up to the top side. They were down on the bottom. Now uh -oh. they don't know where the drone is going. This is gonna be a score for Splice. And there you go, that's a score at the end of the half. It's like when you're on your final possession in football, you get the field goal and you get the momentum going into side two. That's what I love to see from the boys of Splice. They're gonna be happy going into this break. I mean, look, they, they're they probably not too happy, I know, quite I, honest. They only got two points on the board. I, again, I'm going, now I got one sports reference, I'm gonna hit every single sport. Yeah, they, this is like hockey. 
when they got to keep their hands warm because they're playing in a cold bed. Uh, nobody watches. Okay, I'm done. I'm done now. I'm, yeah. I'm giving up. But you do see Splice. They're up going into the second half. You expect them to hold on. From Era, fantastic defense. You need to see them turn that into offense, though, yep. in the second half. Well, let's see what offense they have off the break. Last time they got the early three kills. They moved up with the drone. This time they do the exact same. But can they capitalize on it here? Four dead from Splice. They've got the lane open that they want. Now they have to put their foot on the gas pedal. The drone in the hands of Eviction. He peeks first and actually dies right away. They still have a chance to make this push happen. It's often neglect to stay alive. He does earn himself the scarab. There's the drone. The one point throw. Intercepted by Zero, keeping this a scoreless game so far from Era. Ah, uh, that is tough for Era. It would have been a little bit of a confidence booster, right? You get that one point on the board. You got Lyric playing well. Maybe you can make this a close game here towards the end. No, win it on a last second dunk or tie it up with a one point throw. That one gets intercepted and it's gonna turn into points on the other end as Splice puts in a one point for their own. A two possession game and that's scary with just four minutes remaining and you've yet to get a point on the board. One thing, a silver lining right now in this map is they have kept the slaying even. They were outside by 20 kills in that hard point. This one, a completely different story again off the back of Lyric, who's 20 and 11. But now look at this drone moving on forward. Neglect stealing everything. A four piece there, the seventh streak. And now he's got the Trinity Rocket, the overdrive. There is a chink in the armor of Splice. And now they've got their foot on the gas pedal. Yeah, Era giving them a lot of problems. It's neglect in their base. He was able to pick up a lot of kills. You saw Splice actually for the first time, Jack, there get flustered. They send guys back to their base. They tried to bring guys back to the middle of the map to try and get drone. They split off the spawn. Does not work out. Era comes back, ties the game up. I love it, baby. Six minutes of scoreless play from Era. 40 Five seconds, they have two solid pushes and get their points on the board to tie this one back up. Some life now being shown from this team that pushed through the open bracket to make it to this point. But look, this is the, what but, we're talking about with Zero and Crew. But Get there's where I would have liked to see Era just take more map control, right? They were in the base of Splice. They die. They need to be aggressive back towards mid-map. They just give up so much room to Splice. Jurd comes in with a one-point throw. The tie game goes away. And Neglect, who got that seven streak, earned himself that bombardment, used it right there, and they still give up a point. You don't see anything on the map because of it. A little bit of a panic use, would you say? Uh, yeah, probably. I mean, when you have all those kills going Four in Splice's favor, look at all the map control that they're getting. Now Splice is just doing a great job, just pushing up into the base of Era, and look at where Era is spawning on that top side in that back alley. That is the worst possible place they could be. And if Splice know that, they're looking to capitalize on it here. Madcap with the throw. Connects five to three. So while they do get flustered for a moment, Splice, they regain control. They get that way the kills they need, and they know what to do from there. They're now back up five to three. Two minutes remaining. If you're just tuning in, remember this is a best of five era already down two to zero. They're down two points, and there's only two minutes left for them to try to stay in. And look, game. Neglect is trying to push down bike path completely out of position. Drone goes to Splice in the middle of the map. Another one-point play. What Era needed to do here, Jack, they needed to get towards mid-map and just post up. They just needed a few kills, stabilize, get a little bit under control. They started to get a little bit too antsy there, trying to push up, make something happen, and Splice took advantage of it. What can the boys of Era do? 90 seconds left. They've got a first win gunfights in middle map. They're starting that right now. It comes in with a kill from Jared, but Bantz snaps onto two and stops the pressure for the moment. His team now coming off the spawns. Bantz 26 and 19. We talk about his performance so far this weekend. He's been a monster in search and destroy, and now he's showing it even better here in this uplift. It's the best we've seen Bantz play in Infinite Warfare. I talked wow, to him this really? morning. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I talked to him this morning. He was like, oh, I heard you were hard on me the, the, today. I was like, no, I was just kind of bringing up the fact that I thought this is the best you played in Infinite Warfare, and he actually agreed. He was like, oh, no, I'm messing with you. <laughs> he's like, this is the best event I'll, I've I'll had. Get, he's I'll like, I, that, man. Yeah, he just feels comfortable with this team now. I know uh, we talked a lot of, about it. You know, when they had Josh, he just did not feel comfortable with that roster. You make this change. He looks like a completely different player. <laughs> Zero showing off now with the camo earned as well. Nine to three. In the moment that Eric came back, Splice decided, okay, we're done playing games. Let's show why we're one of the best. Splice will now be four and zero oh in the pools. A perfect performance in Uplink as well. Matt, is this Splice team? Is this the best they've looked as a team in Infinite War? I mean, look, we hype them up as the best team in Europe, and they have definitely lived up to that. I mean, 11 to 3 here against Era, like you were saying, Jack, they're going to take the top in spot in this pool, and they have looked very strong. I mean, Ooh, look, outside of Optic Gaming, who has looked the strongest here at this event? You can make a great argument that it's Splice. 
The Europeans are here on North American soil. Splice sit atop Pool D as the best in that area. Beautiful performance from them as they win that series 3-0. to zero. Fairly convincing win there from Splice. I mean, 13-3 to three here in the uplink. The search and destroy, 6-1. You just saw them display their dominance here against ERA. And ERA, look, you know, they played them tough at times. They need to just go back, look at the film, you know, fix some of their small mistakes, and they can definitely start contending with some of the top teams. Matt, you're a nice guy. I like that. Fairly convincing. I think that you, you would have been safe with just saying convincing in general. 100-point win in the hard point, 6-1 to one in search and destroy. Multiple players streaked out there. You see in the uplink, 13-3. to three. ERA, good performance. You did what you could, but Splice, they're on another level right now as they will sit atop that Pool D and have themselves a spot in the championship winner's bracket, which will take place during MLG primetime later on today. Yeah, you saw, you know, Lyric and Neglect there in the final map for ERA. They played very good in that uplink, but they tie the score. Splice gets back to mid-map. They start getting more control, and then you saw ERA just kind of fall apart there at the end. And the payloads come into play. Some of the streaks get dropped on in, and then it was all over. We'll take a look back at that map on how it was pretty close in the beginning. We mentioned how side one was really a low-scoring game. A lot of it came down to some solid defense. That story a little bit different in side two. Uh, Matt, if you can, any takeaways for ERA from this? What do you want to see them improve upon in the rest of their pool play? Map? I think it's just their offense, right? On defense, they rotated back to the right spots. They were able to pick up the kills. It's just their offense, you know, when they did get a good offensive push, they put some points on the board. You see Neglect here in the opposing team's base, picking up kills. It's like they never did a good job of getting back towards mid-map and stabilizing again. They never got control. After that, you know, two-point score and then the other one-point throw, they never got control yet again. Definitely, there's Splice again. We took that series three to zero. One final box score to take a look at. The standout performances you'll see on the bottom of the screen. This one was all bants. We mentioned him a lot. 31 kills, a 1.41 KD. And look at the ramp up from Splice from side one to side two. I feel like people forgot about how good Bants is. I mean, last year at COD Champs, if Splice ends up winning the whole thing, he's the MVP. Yeah. I mean, there's no doubt. no doubt about it. I mean, he is the MVP of that event last year. Definitely proved towards the end. You know, it was a toss up. Everyone was saying neither Bants or Zero, best player in Europe. Bants looks like he's back, man, in a big way. <laughs> he can hear us right now, Bants. Yeah. You look good, my friend. Congratulations there on the series victory. Splice, they're all smiles, but as we talked about the long run ahead for ERA, Splice, you're by no means done. You've got another major match today in that championship winner's bracket. Again, we'll get updates from the studio on where exactly that all stands, where they'll face. We'll have to see, but for now, that's gonna do it for another great series here on day two of the CWL Dallas Open. Our next match will be ready soon, but first, we're gonna go to an update from the studio after this quick break.